This is the Nothing Phone 2A, a brand new device from Nothing that perhaps somewhat surprisingly undercuts all of their previous releases, making it the new outright budget smartphone in their phone lineup. And given that their previous two smartphone releases already fell in or around that mid-range pricing category, the question I found myself asking was, what did Nothing have to sacrifice to get the price of this phone even lower than those? And I've got to say, after using this phone as my main everyday device for about a month, I feel like I have a really good grasp on exactly that. And some of the compromises they made make a heap of sense and will leave you tipping your hat to the company, but there are some compromises that might actually make you think twice before picking one up yourself. And so with that being said, let's dive in. Okay, let's start with the great parts about this phone. The first of which, without a question, has to be the design. Now, admittedly, this phone does use a heck of a lot more plastic than the two previous phones from Nothing. In fact, the entire back panel and the side rails are completely made out of plastic. But to be honest, the only really noticeable difference in the hand, if you're comparing this phone with Nothing's previous offerings, are those side rails. On the phone one and phone two, the side rails have that sort of cool to the touch metal feeling, whereas you can definitely feel that they are plastic on the phone 2A. But in terms of the back panel, honestly, it feels very, very similar to the back panels on both the phone one and phone two. I always felt like they were a bit plasticky feeling with those phones anyway. So to me, it hardly feels any different here with the 2A. And so aside from the plastic, I actually think that the design of this phone is the best of the entire lineup. We still have those slightly rounded edges on the back, similar to those found on the Phone 2, which makes the phone just that little bit more comfortable in the hand compared to the Phone 1. But then if you get the white or milk variants in particular, then you actually get these really cool color contrast volume and power buttons, which I think look super slick. And then on top of that, I actually just prefer the look of the Phone 2A compared to the first two. Now, that's not to say that I didn't rate the designs of the first two phones, in fact, quite the opposite. But if we're being honest, one could definitely argue that despite the transparent design language, they both still somehow had a bit of an iPhone-y look about them. Well, thanks to that new center camera module, the Phone 2A now definitely stands on its own two feet in the design department. Oh, and those center aligned cameras also help in reducing side to side wobbles when the phone is lying flat, which I personally really appreciate. Now on the front of the phone, we actually now technically have the thinnest bezels of any nothing phone to date, and they're still symmetrical, which is amazing, particularly on a phone of this price. But I will say the plastic frame is ever so slightly thicker than the metal frame on the phone too. So technically the bezels are pretty much the same size. Oh, and by the way, you may have noticed that I haven't mentioned anything regarding the glyphs. And yeah, that's intentional because I literally do not use them at all. And in fact, I spoke at length about them in my review of the Nothing Phone 2. So if you want some more detailed thoughts on the matter, then I'll just link that video up in the cards. But yeah, in terms of the design department, Nothing has absolutely nailed every single choice with the Phone 2A. And the fact that we have a phone at this price point with this design, that is seriously amazing. All right, the next great thing about this phone is the display. Much like the Phone 1 and Phone 2, the 2A still rocks a beautifully fluid 120Hz display. And for me, at this price point, I don't think you're gonna find a better display. It's actually quite a bit brighter than the Phone 1's display too, where it can now reach a peak of 1100 nits when high brightness mode is activated and 1300 nits for viewing HDR content. And although it's not quite as bright as the Phone 2's display, it's still really impressive that we've got this combination of fluidity and brightness on a phone at this price. Real quick, one other fantastic aspect of this phone that I truly appreciate is that the software experience is the exact same as what you'll find on the Phone 2 and Phone 1. So all of those fancy Nothing OS widgets, the lock screen animations, the neat quick settings panel with these big toggles up the top here, all of that stuff is here on the Phone 2A. And that's one of the great parts about Nothing phones right now is that unless there are some sort of hardware limitations, Nothing appears to have an overarching goal of providing all of its phones with the exact same software experience, regardless of price, which is a very Apple thing to do and is not something a lot of other phone manufacturers do. Like I know for a fact that Samsung does not place the same version of One UI on its lower end phones that it gives to its flagship phones. And even Google have been guilty of this recently where the Pixel 8 Pro had features not available on the regular Pixel 8 simply due to Google just blocking them. And just to keep the praise train moving along, the battery on this phone has been another standout feature. 
In fact, it's actually got the largest battery capacity out of any of the Nothing phones released to date, which is really cool. Now the phone certainly doesn't have Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 or Gen 3 levels of efficiency, so it's not a battery champ by any means, but I have not been able to kill it in a single day in the entire month that I've been using it. And in fact, most days I'm ending with roughly 25 to 35% battery left with around five hours of screen on time. And as far as I'm concerned, that is pretty great going. And so for me, if you're looking for a phone with a slick and eye-catching design, a really great display, clean and minimal software, and really great battery life, then this phone ticks every single one of those categories in spades. And I've got to tip my hat to the Nothing team for how they haven't compromised any of these core features, despite the price drop. But of course, when a phone is as cheap as the Phone 2A is, there has to be some compromises, right? Well, yes, and after using this phone for a full month, I reckon there are two medium-sized compromises and one pretty large compromise. So buckle up and let's unpack them. So the first medium-sized compromise is the phone's performance. Now, firstly, when I saw that nothing had opted for a MediaTek Dimensity chipset for this phone, as opposed to the tried and true options from Qualcomm, I was very intrigued as to how that would impact things. But as far as I'm concerned, this phone performs pretty much identically to the Phone 1. Now, I always raved about how solid the Phone 1 was in terms of performance, despite it using a mid-range chip. And so for a lot of people, the Phone 2A's performance is gonna be more than adequate enough. That being said, the Phone 1 is now nearly two years old. And so for a phone released in 2024 to perform like a nearly two-year-old phone, that may be cause for some concern. Now, I will say it handles most things I personally throw at it without issue. And again, the OS itself is so clean and so well optimized that you probably won't notice any significant issues with performance in day-to-day -day tasks. But you know, things like the phone taking longer than usual to boot up or the camera app lagging a bit when taking lots of photos and even some videos showing signs of lagginess after they've been captured, which I can't go back and fix. Or check out this weird glitch that happens when I try and open a timer via the lock screen. Those are the sorts of things that you'll notice in terms of performance suffering a bit with the Phone 2A. There have also been some other little occasional glitches in animations when I've been pushing the phone just that little bit too hard. So that is also something to keep in mind. But my counterpoint to this specific compromise is that anyone buying a phone in this pricing category probably won't be able to find a phone that performs much better. And again, I largely think that this is thanks to the phone's beautiful software experience. But with that being said, it is important to highlight that if you were hoping that somehow nothing had pulled off some sort of miracle in terms of performance with this phone, yeah, that ain't quite the case. All right, the second medium-sized compromise, in my opinion, which actually some people might not see as much of a compromise at all, but it is the lack of wireless charging. And I'm gonna be honest, during my briefing calls before this phone was announced, this one probably hit me the hardest. For some reason, given that the Nothing team chose to include wireless charging on the Phone 1, despite its ridiculously low price point, I thought that this was always gonna be a non-negotiable with Nothing phones forever into the future. But alas, that has obviously been proven not to be the case. And I think my disappointment doesn't necessarily relate to the Phone 2A itself, but more to the fact that now Nothing has made the call to remove wireless charging from their baseline phone, it means they're probably gonna be more willing to get rid of it in future phones as well. Like, who knows? Maybe they'll eventually only reserve wireless charging for their flagship phones in the future. Now, I obviously don't know if this is gonna be the case at all, but as far as I'm concerned, I actually really hope that this is the first and last Nothing phone without wireless charging. Okay, and so then we come to the last pretty large compromise that this phone makes, which is, as you might have guessed, the cameras. Now, again, for $350, can I really complain about the cameras not being that great? No, not really. But I think the point needs to be made that if you're the sort of person who loves having at least one great camera on your phone, then I don't think that this is the phone for you. Now, to be clear, in very good lighting conditions and with subjects that are unmoving, such as you know pictures of architecture or landscapes, even pictures of adults who know how to stand still for more than half a second, then with the main lens, you can catch up okay to decent photos. But if like me, you're someone who has kids and you wanna take some quality pictures of them playing and having fun, or perhaps you have pets and you take lots of photos of them, even in decent lighting, you'll struggle to capture photos without any motion blur. And then in less than optimal conditions, yeah, probably not even worth your time. 
In fact, to paint a bit of a picture, I was struggling so much with the cameras on this phone that for the first time in about two years, I had to resort to using a G-Cam port, which did help a bit with producing better looking images, but I couldn't find one that supported the ultra wide camera. Plus, although you can remap a double press of the power button to open the G-Cam mod, your phone needs to be unlocked to use it, which can be a little bit annoying depending on the scenario. On top of that, I also had a recent overseas trip during which time I was using the Nothing Phone 2A. And whilst I was away, I wanted to be able to capture some quality photos and videos with my phone. And whilst I did capture some photos and videos with the 2A, as you're seeing on screen right now, I was not at all confident to take it as my only camera. So I actually ended up taking the iPhone 15 Pro as well, just so that I could guarantee that I was gonna be able to get some quality shots. An iPhone for goodness sake, I am an Android user. And if I was using any other Android phone like my Pixel 8 Pro or the Galaxy S24 or S24 Ultra, there's no way I would have felt the need to pack an iPhone for shooting photos and videos. Now again, it's 350 bucks. So can I really complain, particularly given how many good things there are about this phone? No, not really. That being said, I think this is where Google and Apple's impressive computational photography truly shines because no matter how much you spend on a Pixel or iPhone, whether it's a thousand bucks or 500, you know you're gonna be able to produce fantastic images. And I think that's really the best place to end this video because ultimately, if you are someone who holds a lot of value in being able to capture quality photos and videos using your phone, then the Phone 2A is probably not the phone to get. But if not, and you also don't care about the lack of wireless charging and the slightly subpar performance, then as far as I'm concerned, you are not gonna find a better phone for the price. Mm -hmm.